Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yasudian, a consultant dermatologist based in the UK. Many of us get up from our sleep and notice lines on our facial skin. These marks are called sleep lines. Let's look at what they are, what causes them, and how to prevent them. It's based on an article published in the International Journal of Dermatology just a few weeks ago. The term sleep creases was first used by Stegman in 1987, but this was later changed to sleep lines in 1999. As the name suggests, they are related to opposition during sleep. It's assumed to be the main factor in their appearance due to the skin compression against the pillow or the bed surfaces. It tends to affect individuals who sleep on one side rather than on their back. They are seen as oblique to vertical lines on the forehead, around the eyes, on the sides of the nose, the cheeks and the chin. They can be faint to start with but become deeper with time and with repeated sleeping in the same position. The mechanisms that cause sleep lines may be different from the muscle movements that cause aging and facial expression related folds. This explains the clinical difference in the direction of the lines from facial wrinkles. Sleeping on one's back seems to minimize these sleep related wrinkles as face compression is reduced. The problem is that even though this can help avoid sleep lines, it may not be practical for sometimes it can aggravate sleep related breathing disorders, particularly obstructive sleep apnea. It also has the potential to increase the severity and intensity of snoring. Also, it's difficult to maintain our sleep position, especially for old, older adults, as we keep changing throughout our sleep cycle. There may be other reasons for sleep lines beyond just compressive mechanisms. So let's look at each one of these factors as addressing them may reduce the chance of getting sleep lines. Factor one, poor sleep quality. This may contribute to sleep lines, not only on the face, but also on the body. Increased movement and agitation during sleep may have a greater mechanical impact on the skin, possibly leading to more tissue stretching. This in turn may reduce skin hydration and alter the skin barrier integrity. Good skin hydration, both internally with fluids and externally with moisturizers before we retire to bed, may be protective. Factor two. The skin type and sun damage in a given person. One study found a very strong association between melanocotton gene which expresses the color of the skin and the development of sleep lines. Those with fair skin were more likely to develop sleep lines. We know that wrinkle formation occurs as we age due to a reduction in the collagen in the skin. This occurs due to breakdown of the collagen and elastin with ultraviolet exposure. The skin then becomes less elastic and extensible. In a similar way, increased sun damage may make some individuals more susceptible to sleep lines as well. Factor three, the skin aging process, which involves several pathways, including internal and external factors. Internal factors are genetics and hormonal influences. External environmental influences include photo damage, air pollution, smoking, nutrition, cosmetic use, and stress. Taken together, all these components may determine the individual's response to the development of sleep lines. Factor four is a change in the skin microbiome. There's some evidence that skin microbes can change due to effects of stress. This may affect the skin balance and lead to various dermatological conditions that compromise the skin barrier. A classical example is atopic eczema, where changes in the skin bacteria makes the person more likely to develop infection and flares of the skin inflammation. Similarly, a change in the skin microbiome may predispose to the development of sleep lines as well. So how can we use this information in our daily practice to prevent the development of sleep lines? Firstly, we should avoid sleeping on one side, but as discussed, this is not always practical. Secondly, the quality of sleep is important. If we have a disturbed sleep, then it's likely to affect our skin as well. Thirdly, it's essential to maintain good skin hydration. Having a glass of water or milk or hot chocolate before retiring to bed ensures that our skin does not become dehydrated overnight. Applying a thin film of moisturizers also helps. Remember that the facial skin is sensitive and thin and therefore the use of moisturizers 
specific for sensitive skin may be helpful. I've discussed the principles of how to treat sensitive facial skin with moisturizers in a video titled Rosacea and the Skin Barrier, so it may be worthwhile looking at that. Finally, we need to try and avoid environmental toxins. Avoid smoking, wash your face when you get back home and remove all the pollutants in the air that may have settled on your facial skin. Ensure that the amount of sun exposure to your facial skin is minimized to reduce photo damage. Try and optimize cosmetic use as it can irritate the skin if left for excessive periods of time. And finally, make sure that you have good nutrition as this helps our skin to stay young and healthy. This is discussed in another video which I've done previously. In conclusion, sleep lines have a strong association with compression of the skin during our sleep. There are a range of other factors that may affect skin integrity, including aging, genetics, stress, and sleep dysregulation. Addressing each one of these factors is helpful in preventing sleep lines. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you for listening and bye.